I have tried, and believe me, I have tried to make this interesting. I even walked for the best part of three miles into the middle of nowhere to find some Pete Hags to shoot part of this video, only to realise that the wind was too strong and my microphone wasn't up to the job, which made the audio terrible. So I wholeheartedly apologise in advance for my failings here. But whilst this might not be the most interesting of topics, it is hugely important, not just for the environment, but for the future of agriculture as well. So, if you're not interested in probably one of the biggest changes and seismic shifts in British agriculture in the past probably thousand years, then I'll allow you to click away. That's probably going to do nothing for retention figures, but you're allowed. On the other hand, if you are interested in how to make money from carbon and want to understand carbon markets and how they work, then stick around. But first, let's take a wee trip down memory lane. The year was 2005, the first video was uploaded onto YouTube. Tony Blair was the Prime Minister of the UK and Eminem was at the top of the charts. And more importantly, the Kyoto Protocol was entered into force. This was the international treaty that committed state parties to reduce greenhouse gas emissions based on the scientific evidence that the earth was warming and man-made emissions were driving it. This was the precursor to the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement where governments pledged to keep global temperatures below one and a half degrees Celsius and achieve a state of net zero, i.e. carbon neutrality. The UK has committed to achieving net zero by 2050. In order to achieve this, they're allowing companies to offset unavoidable carbon emissions by creating a financial incentive to cut back, hence creating the demand for a carbon credit. One carbon credit is equal to one tonne of sequestered carbon. Sequestered carbon is carbon that is captured from the atmosphere and stored. Regulated carbon trading started back in 2005 when the EU set up the first international emissions trading scheme, which is the EU ETS. And since leaving the EU, the UK has set up its own emissions trading scheme, which is the UK ETS. Alongside regulated carbon markets, unregulated in brackets voluntary markets have also emerged. So let's have a look at each one in turn. The compliance market is a regulated market used by governments and companies that are required by law to account for their greenhouse gas emissions. The three main compliance markets are one, the Kyoto Protocol, which is the United Nations Clean Development Mechanism. Two is the EU Emissions Trading Scheme. This sets a cap on the amount of greenhouse gases that companies are allowed to emit each year. Allowances are issued each year and if a company doesn't have enough to cover its own emissions then it can either cut back or it can buy additional allowances. Over time, fewer and fewer allowances are issued pressurising emissions to be reduced. Number three is the UK ETS which works in exactly the same way as the EU ETS. You can see a common theme here but with tighter emissions caps. Now, alongside regulated markets, voluntary or unregulated markets for carbon have also emerged. These are for private sector companies or individuals who want to offset their carbon emissions but are not required by law to do so. Currently, there are around 12,000 companies in the UK that are required by law to account for their carbon emissions. Those are companies with a turnover of over £25 million and a balance sheet bigger than £12 million. It's important to note that credits bought under a voluntary market, an unregulated market, cannot be used for compliance purposes at the minute. The three main standards for voluntary carbon trading in the UK are currently, one is the Woodland Carbon Code, which is currently operational. Number two is the Peatland Carbon Code, again, currently operational. And three is the Soil Carbon Code, which is currently under development and not operational. Buyers in these markets are, as the name suggests, voluntary and are typically companies or individuals who see it as their duty to offset their own carbon emissions, typically for corporate social responsibility or for marketing purposes. Types of carbon credits that can be sold is actually a very, very big topic and a complicated one. I will probably do a separate video on each one of these in the not so distant future, but let's have a quick overlook at the different types of credits that can be sold. The Woodland Carbon Code was set up in 2011 by the Forestry Commission in partnership with the government. Under the code, it's only possible to sell carbon credits from new projects, so you can't actually sell credits from existing woodland. Carbon units can be sold as a pending insurance unit, which is a PUI, which is effectively just an upfront payment, or a promise to deliver 
through the Woodland Carbon Code, which is a through time payment. The second type of credit is through the Peatland Carbon Code. I've already done a couple of videos on the power of peat to sequester carbon. I'm already a fan, not just because I'm Scottish. The Peatland Carbon Code works in the very same way as the Woodland Carbon Code, and once projects are registered under the UK Carbon Registry, I'll put a link for that below, then they are validated and they can start issuing PUIs or PCUs, which are peatland carbon units. The third type of credit that can be sold is a soil carbon unit, and this is the most vague at the minute because it's a very, very complex subject. In July 2021, the Environment Agency awarded grants to a consortium of farmers and academics to develop a soil carbon code which is currently under development. So now we get to the good bit. How do we go about calculating all this stuff, and more importantly, how much is it all worth? Well, this very much depends on how much carbon you've actually got to sell and the price of carbon credits in the open market. Calculating carbon, as you can imagine, is actually really difficult and it relies on a huge number of variables and particularly in the case of calculating soil carbon, it is not an exact science. Exactly how it is done is way beyond the scope of this video, which is why I've included a link to two of the resources below that you can use to calculate carbon. For Woodland Projects, you use the WCC Carbon Calculator Spreadsheet, link below. For Peatland Projects, you use the Carbon Emissions Calculator. And at the minute, for soil carbon, there is no calculator or spreadsheet available, although they are working on developing one. The big question on everyone's mind is how much is this worth? What is the price of a carbon credit? For the regulated UK ETS market, the price is set by the UK ETS Authority. In 2020, the price for carbon was a shade under £48, which then jumped to £58 in 2022, and it is now at a shade over £83 in 2023. But here's the issue. The price for voluntary or unregulated markets is much lower because nobody at the minute is forcing these companies to buy credits or account for their carbon emissions. So the price for unregulated voluntary markets is in around 15 to 25 pounds per carbon credit. But I should add that this is a dramatic rise from two pounds per unit that we saw back in 2019. So the numbers are on the up. As I mentioned previously, there are around 12,000 companies in the UK at present who are required to undertake greenhouse gas monitoring and account for their carbon emissions. These are basically large companies with revenue over 25 million pounds or a balance sheet bigger than 12 million pounds. The UK Carbon Code allowed them to buy credits to compensate for their greenhouse gas emissions. So once you've undertaken a carbon audit and it's been verified, you need to find a buyer. And you can do this in one of three ways. In England, you can sell carbon credits to the government through DEFRA's Woodland Carbon Guarantee. Two, you can register your projects in the UK Carbon Land Registry. I'll put a link in the description below. And three, you can use carbon brokers or find private buyers yourself. Once you find a buyer, you'll then need to agree on a whole host of terms, including price, when payments are to be made, access rights, options on other schemes, etc, etc. So please do get proper legal and financial advice before you enter into any contract with a buyer. There's no regulatory framework for voluntary carbon markets, which means there's a lot of moving parts, things to consider, and unfortunately, a lot of people out there trying to make a quick buck. So please ensure that you seek proper financial and legal advice before selling any carbon credits. And here are a few things just to look out for. Watch out for greenwashing, which is basically a company trying to exaggerate its green credentials. This happens when companies buy carbon credits before taking steps to reduce their avoidable emissions, which makes them still major polluters. So understand fully who it is that you're going to be selling to. Make sure you understand all the implications of trading carbon before you sell. This includes tax, land tenure, the effects on the capital value of the land, and your ability to enter into other environmental schemes. So this is where financial and legal advice will pay dividends. Be really good and clear with your record keeping so that you know how much carbon you have to sell and once you've sold some, how much you have left, particularly in a landlord, say, tenant situation so that you can stop things like double counting. Fairly probable in the not so distant future that supermarkets are going to want their supply chains to be low carbon. So if you sold all your carbon credits off to someone else and you get none for yourself, then you won't be able to use sold sequestered on packaging. And lastly, have a contingency plan. Carbon schemes and carbon trading contracts typically have a long term, 30 years plus. So have a contingency and a buffer of carbon credits there so that if something like a forest fire happens, 
then you're not going to break that contract. This does happen to some extent under the Woodland Carbon Code where you have to keep a 20% buffer, but please keep this in mind for other carbon schemes as well. So what next? Well, the purpose of this video is to give you an understanding of carbon markets and how we got to where we are today. But in March of 2023, which is when I'm recording this video, the advice to landowners and to farmers is very much don't sell your carbon credits yet. And there's very good reason for this. Firstly, the voluntary markets are still unregulated. There is no baseline for which the market operates, which means that there's a lot of room for error on both the buying and selling side. Secondly, prices are going to rise. The demand for credits is simply going to increase as we get closer and closer to the deadline of net zero in 2050. It's simple supply and demand. And thirdly, make sure you cover your own emissions first. It's more than probable that land-based businesses are going to be required to account for their own carbon emissions, so please make sure that you keep enough credits back after your carbon audit to cover your own emissions before you sell any. Agriculture, as we know, is one of the big polluters, so no doubt it is going to be in the crosshairs of government when it comes to achieving net zero. So, I hope that was useful and, on the most part, mildly interesting. I believe that carbon and carbon markets are going to be an absolute game changer for farmers and landowners here in the UK over the next few years. 